Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here with another kitchen conundrum for you. Now, I'm sure you've been hearing about this. This is sous vide technology, and what does that mean? And have you ever thought about buying one of these devices and trying it out at home? Well, today I'm gonna give you a beginner's guide to sous vide and three different ways in which you can use it. What is sous vide? Well, sous vide definitively is the French term meaning under vacuum. And the name is kind of interesting because you do cook foods in these little bags without air, and that is kind of under vacuum. But the most important thing that sous vide cooking does is it cooks things to a specific temperature. This device here will heat up the water to a specific temperature, and it's not gonna go any higher than that. The fear of overcooking your fish or overcooking your steak is really over if you use a device like this. Now, I'm hooking this up to this deep basin here, but you could certainly use a pot. You could use another deep vessel that you might have in your house. And just to get started, I wanna fill this up with a little bit of water. Now, on the device itself, you're gonna see that it has a max and a minimum level of where the water needs to be. You wanna make sure that you fill it up with enough water so that you're somewhere in between. So now, to set this device, I'm gonna be cooking fish, and for fish you need to set this device at about 123 degrees Fahrenheit. That will give you a wonderful tender and flaky fish. Today I'm gonna be using halibut here, but this would be great for salmon, snapper, any type of fish. So one of the things, when you're cooking sous vide, you wanna make sure that you prepare your ingredient. I'm gonna drizzle this with like a little bit of olive oil here and season it up with a little bit of salt. Now, if you wanted to infuse this with additional flavors, you could certainly add a little bit of lemon, a little bit of herbs to the bag that we're going to put it in, and that will impart a really nice, delicate flavor onto the fish. So I'm using a six ounce halibut filet here. It's about an inch in thickness, and I'm, I've kept the skin on because after we cook it in the sous vide device here, um, it's going to be wonderful and tender and flaky, but to give it a little bit of color and to crisp up the skin, I'm going to sear it after in a pan with a little bit of butter and we'll get a really nice color and a crunchy, crisp skin. Take a little bit more olive oil and put it into the bag. You always wanna add a little bit of oil to anything that you're cooking in a bag for the sous vide here because you don't want the fish in this case to stick to the bag or stick in any of the crevices of the bag. So one of the things that you wanna do, you want to remove all the air. And the reason you're removing all the air is you want the bag to sit submerged in the water and you don't want it to float up to the top. So I'm just gonna press out as much air as I possibly can. And the fish is gonna take about 45 minutes to cook until it's a nice flaky texture. Now you could clip this onto the side if you want, but if your bags are sealed really well, it should be fine and no water should get in. We're gonna let that cook. In this tub over here, I have some eggs. So you don't necessarily need to use bags to cook in. Some foods have their own vessel. And here I have some eggs that have been going for about 45 minutes. Eggs fully cook at 160 degrees, so we're cooking this at a lower temperature, 147 degrees, so that it has a nice silky, custardy, um, almost like a poached egg texture, but a little bit softer than that. And what I'm gonna do here is just crack this guy into a bowl, and you should have a very silken custardy. You can see how it jiggles. It's a very soft poached egg. And you can just take a spoon and gently lift this guy out. And just to show you the um, consistency of the yolk, I'm gonna break this guy here and show you just how creamy and custardy the yolk is as well. So this is a real treat for somebody who likes a really soft boiled or soft poached egg. Really, really tasty and delicious. Now, what happens if you go over the time recommended for eggs? Well, I have an example of that as well because I just wanna show you what that means here. And so this egg has been in the same temperature water for about two hours. Now the white should be cooked to pretty much the same consistency, but the yolk is going to have a stiffer, creamier texture. You can see that it's not as runny and that's the extended amount of time. So it's not as though the proteins in the whites of the egg are overcooking or becoming stiffer, but the fat in the yolk is actually gelling and creating a different 
consistency. A little bit of nerdy science for you guys. So last but not least, I'm going to show you steak. Sous vide is actually a really great way to get your meat perfectly cooked and also extremely evenly cooked. This is a strip steak that I'm using here today. It's about 16 ounces, about an inch in thickness. So now for the preparation of the steak here, I'm using some herbs. This is thyme, but you could also use a little bit of rosemary. You could use some peeled garlic cloves. That would be fantastic to give a little bit of flavor to whatever you're cooking. So a little bit of olive oil here, some salt and pepper. And I have my water set at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is going to yield this temperature in about um, an hour to two hours of time. Uh, will yield a nice medium to medium rare steak. With all of these devices, the really the beauty behind it is that uh, the companies that manufacture them have wonderful informational assets online. Um, and also you can download apps to program the devices and to alert your mobile device. So there really is a lot of information out there about this technology. And I would encourage you that if you do purchase one of these, visit the site, do some research, find the one that you like best um, and that has the most information available to you so that you can have success in whatever you're making. So this steak, it's going right into this bag here. I'm using a gallon size plastic bag. I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil and now I'm going to try and squeeze out as much air as possible. And this is going into that 140 degree water for about an hour. And I have one that's already done. This has been in for about an hour and a half. And now it's time to finish the steak and to sear it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna finish and sear this steak in a skillet. So in my skillet, I'm gonna add a teeny bit of olive oil into the base. I'm gonna take the steak and I'm going to place it into my skillet. High heat, you want a good sear here. And you're gonna sear the steak for about a minute to a minute and a half on each side. So while the steak is searing, I wanna talk about some other proteins that you could use and the temperatures that you should cook them at. Now, chicken breasts, they're extremely popular. Everybody loves chicken breasts, but they're always concerned about overcooking your chicken breast. So you can cook your chicken breast in the sous vide method and you want to make sure that you're using a temperature of about 149 to 150 degrees for chicken breast. Now when it comes to chicken thighs, you want to go to 165 or even a little bit above that. That temperature is totally fine because there is so much connective tissue and um, the muscle or chicken thighs or legs are well worked muscles so you can take them to a higher temperature um, and it's totally fine. So I'm going to give this guy a good flip. It should have some nice color, which it does. Another minute on this side over here. I'm gonna give it a little bit more salt, a little bit of pepper. Now, during the last few seconds, maybe the last 30 seconds of cooking, a really great thing is to add a little bit of butter to the pan. You're gonna let the butter melt and brown. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this butter and baste the steak with it. It will give an incredible amount of flavor to the steak and make this so delicious. If you wanted to add even more flavor, you can take some herbs. I have thyme, but you could certainly use rosemary. That would be fantastic here. And this is kind of a classic French technique of basting meat. I'm gonna take the steak and I'm gonna put it on the cutting board to rest just for a few minutes before I slice it up and show you guys how perfectly cooked this steak is. All right, so it's the moment of truth. Let's see how the steak looks. It should be nice and rosy pink on the inside. Medium steak, which is what you're looking for. Now, if you wanted something rarer, you guys, you could go down to 129 degrees. Again, that would be for another hour in the sous vide. But there you go, guys, a beginner's guide to sous vide cooking. I encourage you guys to go out, buy a sous vide device, whatever your brand preference might be, and try it out at home. And remember to use all of the online resources that are available for time and temperatures of cooking so many different things. We love to hear from you guys and keep those great questions coming. Enjoy. Enjoy.